Hey guys, so we are currently on a getaway, a little vacation, mini minication mm -hmm. in uh, Western North Carolina, kind of hanging out, but uh, wanted to make, this probably actually is going to get cut up into multiple pieces <laughs> as a couple different, uh, different short videos and some things specifically for patrons, might even get into something just for <laughs> the uh, builders and architects, or maybe even just the architects, I don't know, I'll figure it out when I get there. <laughs> but uh, we've been having a good time, haven't we? Yes, sir. Now, yes. we came up yesterday, got a, a neat little Airbnb in the middle of nowhere um, mm -hmm. called Moonshiners, Moonshiners Cabin, Moonshiners... Moonshiners, what's it called? Getaway. Moon, moonshiner something. Yeah. And so all the all the uh, all the 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 decoration motif both here and out around the outdoor fireplace and uh, as you come in is all moonshining related, which is a, a very Appalachian Western North Carolina sort of thing. Um, but. Uh, this has been cool. It's kind of been in the plans for a couple weeks, uh, maybe a couple months. months. Couple months. months. Mm -hmm. months. Yeah. Couple months. Some surprises. Had a little surprise for the ladies today. They didn't know about. We went and uh, I took them somewhere, and they got a massage today. Uh, 60, 60 minutes apiece with uh, with Melissa, right? Yes. So that was nice, and then visiting through uh, through the area that we are, a little town with a whole bunch of neat stuff in it. But I wanted to come in and share a couple things, a couple different major major thoughts. And you know what? There's a raccoon in that canoe as well. Yes. Just like the one at the... I didn't even think about that. <laughs> it must be a local thing. I thought it was a squirrel. <laughs> no, no. Last night we ate at a very nice restaurant at, uh, at the Nantahala Resort. And it wasn't in our plans, the place that we wanted to go... We got there and they were closed. In fact, they closed maybe five minutes before they we got there, and they said, "Oh no, we stopped serving five minutes ago." Sorry. <laughs> so so no we, exceptions. We said okay, uh, and and ended up stopping at another place called the Callisto at the Nantahala uh, Resort. That was fantastic. But when we walked in the door, there was a big taxidermy display that was about this long, mm -hmm. I think, with with a canoe made out of tree bark and, um, and other pieces, very nicely done. <coughs> very nicely done with uh, two, two raccoons, a uh, couple of raccoons with paddles, paddling the, the uh, canoe. That was the, the taxidermy display, it was cute. And then I looked up here and on the mantle, there's a canoe with a raccoon in it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I didn't even make the connection, so. That was cool. But uh, first thing I would talk about, or maybe ask you ladies to talk a little bit about, um, you've been part of my family for six months. Yes, right? sir. You're, and you, we've been married for 32 years. Yes, sir. Plus. And the last six months, I've noticed, or I've, I've watched from the initial tensions when... Uh, when you came into the family, the initial tensions and just kind of the changes in growth and then the last few days really just kind of watching how y'all mesh and work together and, and enjoyed, seemed to enjoy each other's company, lots of stuff, just playing and having fun, mm -hmm. um, enjoying time in the kitchen, working to, certainly, you know, moments where, where things, you know, people have to work things out as they go, but talk for a minute about the progression that you've been through and and where you feel like we are and where we're going and that kind of thing. I, I'm putting them on the spot. They've had zero prep for anything that we're going to talk about. I've got some. I've got a surprise or two. <laughs> They're like, oh no. <laughs> well, from the initial in October to now is complete turnaround and you need to make sure you talk loud enough for the cameras um so from israel to now is a complete turnaround it's a complete 180 degrees turnaround um and it's a process it's not going to happen overnight but for me 
it was basically just lots of prayer. Me spending lots of time in prayer with Yah and asking Him how I need to change, what do I need to change, and being willing to do that change. Um, and that is not always easy because you get in a routine of being a certain way and then you're asked to step out of that routine and it's it's a challenge it, it it is a very difficult challenge especially when the the marriage is as long as it has been just the two of us and then bringing somebody else in um it's 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 a challenge it's a change and it the dynamic on everything changes and so um, for me, it's just been lots of prayer and um, spending time with Yah, asking Him how I can change, asking you what I need to do to make things better, um, how I need to change as well. And then just being willing to listen to the Holy Spirit guide me uh, on, on different things as well. And I'm still learning is still a process like I said before and I still have times where I'm I feel myself jittery I still feel um, uh, anxiety in some areas and that's gonna you know it's gonna take time mm -hmm. um, but it's not as bad as it used to be and um, but the one thing that that I had to learn to do is I had to and I had to ask God Yahweh to give me this because it was just not there is I had to ask Yah to give me a love for Lily um, because in the initial it wasn't there um, and now um, I I'm very grateful for her grateful for her and <laughs> just a little um, snippet of today <clears throat> um, there was a couple of things that the Therapist, the therapist, the massage, massage, not massage, <laughs> massage therapist, massage therapist, yes, the not misogynist, the misogynist, <laughs> that's what I started to say, um, the massage therapist, thank you, um, was speaking these woo woo things over me, and immediately it was yeah. no, mm -mm, mm, nope, and after she said it the third time of clear your mind. And visualize the eye in your head. And I'm like, whoa. And for the longest time, I would not close my eyes. I would not. I just laid there and looked at the carpet. And then finally, I started praying. I had scripture going through my head. I was praying out loud. I was scripture out loud. She couldn't hear me. But it was just, I was rebuking everything that was going on. But in my prayer today, I was thanking Yah for my family and for our boys and for Peter and thanking God that I was, that I have the love that I have for Lily now. And it just continues to grow as we spend more and more time together. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think the therapist, <laughs> I think she was catching vibes off of me. And um, it was very, very interesting how it, when it started, to where it ended and um, I noticed that there was there was a change in her with me um, and so but yes I um, I thank Lee uh, I thank Yah for Lily being in our family she's been a huge help to me and I'm sure as time goes on and Yah brings her to us permanently that there'll be other areas that she'll be a help to me as well um, but she's also a help to our, I uh, just to our family in general. And so, um, but yeah, I personally, I think I have, I've come a long way, baby. Yep. How about you? What do you, uh, we're six months in. What do you think? Cause actually six months, uh, if we, if we were doing anniversaries or whatever would have been three days ago. Yes. And in fact, today is one year ago today that you joined our patron yes that's ultimately how we met so yeah mm -hmm. true um so six months um six months ago 
yeah i think for me also it's been a learning curve um yeah learning how to be in a relationship and you know it's not a relationship that um is is mainstream <laughs> so it also takes uh, an additional uh, learning process but basically understanding the dynamic and how i fit um so and not being you know not residing uh with you it also adds another layer of difficulty um but i think it's yeah for me it's been um yeah the, I'm enjoying the, the the learning and and the process um and trying to yeah enjoy the ride and you know making the the most out of it but it's yeah it's it's everything is new for me yeah. and yeah it's i think if if i had had a previous marriage before or or a stable relationship it would still be very different so yeah, I think for me it's been lots of new new experiences. Now you had lots of fears going into this, and was it as bad as you thought it would be, or was it not as bad as you thought it would be? I had a lot of I had a lot of what ifs, and my what ifs turned out to be not what ifs, and um, I made. Mountains out of molehills. Okay. And the one thing I, I, that came to my mind that Lily was talking about a second ago is I think the reason why this is so difficult is because we're not taught this. We didn't grow up in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so even though you and I met other couples that have plural relationships, we're only around them for two or three days at a time. We've never been in another plural family's home. And so we never saw how it actually worked. We, we've heard them talk about it, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and just give us sure. a little snippet of this and that and the other, but we never really saw it in action. Right. And so my thought, I because we're not really... We're going into this sort of blinded, mm -hmm. blind, not well, blinded, yeah, blind. Yeah, sort of. Well, it's we're not familiar with this territory mm -hmm. because we haven't lived it. We haven't seen people live it actively for, um, which which really is a major point I think for particularly those who understand scripture and understand Hebraic culture, <laughs> understand Israelite heritage um this would have been very normal for the average person the average family yes, um even at the time of yeshua according to i think it's walter scheidel um a stanford university professor uh, who did some research on polygyny at the time of uh, of messiah even then it was so common that it wasn't wasn't even worth commenting on uh which so the average person would grow up being very familiar with the culture, very familiar mm -hmm. with sort of the underlying expectations, how things work. There's there's a base of knowledge past father to son based on um, just being in and growing up around polygynous and heavily patriarchal families, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So we're getting to learn some of that, not necessarily the hard way, but we have to learn by experience because you can't pick up a book, you can't... There are very few YouTube videos that you can go watch and say, hey, how do you do this, right? Um, there are no DIY. Well, we're, we're sort of making some of those. We are. But more of that happens in our patron. Just if, if you're not part of our patron and you really want to be able to interact with multiple families that are polygynous, because we have several families now within our patron that are polygynous, um, that's a that's a great place to great place to be is to join our patron and then I think it's at the five dollar a month level uh, you can join our telegram groups and we've got uh, you know a men's group a women's group and everybody's group I've got some other subgroups that are working on projects together 
We've also got uh, memes and resources. So we've got a we've got a bunch of different stuff going on in, inside of our patron, not just for helping people who are coming in asking questions, or in cases people coming in that are saying, "I found myself in this situation. I knew the right thing to do was to go ahead and keep both women, but now what do I do?" Mm -hmm. right? And so being able, having men and women that can, can, can counsel and encourage and strengthen both sides and keep, not just keep families together, but help them bond and grow and improve and that kind of thing. But, but that's part of what we're doing is we're doing the DIY, right? Yes, sir. Um, so that's a, that, that's a big benefit in our patron. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you said when we were initially communicating is that uh, you are sort of having this existential crisis. What is life about? What is, I want life with meaning. And then this is kind of what came to you. And this was, uh, the understanding came to you as you were studying Torah and that sort of thing before we met. At this point in your life, would you say that there's meaning? There's more to it? There's a lot more going on? What, what would you say with regards to where you are right now and where you see Bait Rambo, the house of Pete going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I I see now, um, and I mentioned this to you um, in the beginning because once you you start having faith and you become a believer, uh, the next question in your head is, okay, so what do I do with this? Uh, it's and if I was alone, I didn't have children. And okay, so what what am I doing with with this yeah new heart or you know you you, you call it but um, and then I was in a moment of um, question or praying to to know where where to focus my life yeah is it going to be helping others or studying more or doing something by myself or you know having a family um and i sort of thought that for a family it was too late um but you know sometimes sometimes it's not too late I so not. i think it's not cool cool enough <clears throat> So while we were while we were shopping today, Kelly can show off her pretty new mug. Um, while we were shopping today, she was stricken by yes, Vanna. Um, she she really was struck by this. But what's the real advantage of this mug? I I can put my arm in the handle. Yeah, that's that was the Where selling most, point. Most mugs have very small places. Arm won't fit in that, but this one had a great big looping handle. The, the challenge is the uh, the heat transfer, and so we had to get out the the uh, the koozie cover that I made for her um, to button on. But it's I think cool it's cooled down a little bit. Yes, she sir. can she can do it. We yes, waited enough. We wanted to show off the mug. So mm -hmm. very nice. Um, so this has clear meaning and direction for you. Yes, also because um, it's something that you have. Uh, you had already, um, it was a mission for your family, so basically, yeah, it also gives me, I know where I'm coming to and, you know, what, where, where you want to take the family and what is the, what is the purpose. Right, right. so I, I have a clear, articulable mission for the, <laughs> for the family, the direction, what our purpose is, what we're here for. Yes. Uh, and this is, so it wasn't a mystery to you. You weren't coming in going, well, I wonder where this is going to go. No, we know where, you, you know where I want to go. Yes, sir. Um, and it's not just about having, you know, having a larger family. It's about, you know, building Kol Israel. It's about restoring the culture, restoring the people, walking out what scripture has and uh, mm -hmm. understanding teaching, headship and patriarchy, etc. So, yeah. Because a lot of people say, okay, I want more children. So what do you want more children for? Yeah. Right. Build yeah. what? Uh, what yeah. is the legacy? Yeah, because, uh, you know, in, in ancient times, more children was because you needed labor on the farm. Mm -hmm. It was because you needed help in the, in the family business or businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Today, more children, 
I, I think part of it is just be fruitful and multiply. But at the end of the day, that's not really enough to to be a mission just to say, how many children can we have? It needs to be more than that. There's got to be, I think there needs to be some purpose behind that. What? Why is the father, why would the father entrust you with more children and what's his, what's his purpose? So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and really she's hinting at or talking in the direction of one of the things that I harp on often, and that's the importance of a man having a mission, having a vision. The vision should be way out there, and the mission's going to be five years or ten years. What is the short-term direction uh, to navigate towards that the family vision that should be a 50-year vision or, or, you know, 100 years down the road? So where's, what's, what's the trajectory you're setting your, your children on? Mm -hmm. right. There we go. All right, guys. So a little bit about what we got going on right now. A few thoughts. Uh, hope something in there sticks and helps you out or something of benefit. And so for King and Kingdom, we, we bid you shalom. shalom.